بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد one of the beautiful long ذكر that the Prophet used to say عليه الصلاة والسلام to inaugurate the prayer after تكبيرة الإحرام saying الله أكبر he used to read this beautiful dua وجهت وجهي للذي فطر السماوات والأرض حنيفا وما أنا من المشركين إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين لا شريك له وبذلك أمرت وأنا من المسلمين اللهم أنت الملك لا إله إلا أنت أنت ربي وأنا عبدك ظلمت نفسي واعترفت بذنبي فاغفر لي ذنوبي جميعا إنه لا يغفر الذنوب إلا أنت واهدني لأحسن الأخلاق لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت واصرف عني سيئها لا يصرف عني سيئها إلا أنت لبيك وسعديك والخير كله بيديك والشر ليس إليك أنا بك وإليك تباركت وتعاليت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك I have turned my face sincerely towards he who has created the heavens and the earth. And I'm not of those who associate others with Allah. Indeed, my prayer, my sacrifice, my life and my death are for Allah, Lord of the, the worlds. No partner has he. With this, I'm commanded and I am of the Muslims or I'm the first of the Muslims. O oh Allah, you are the sovereign. None has the right to be worshipped except you. You are my Lord and I'm your servant. I have wronged my own soul and have acknowledged my sin. So forgive me all my sins for no one forgives sins except you. Guide me to the best of characters, for none can guide to it other than you. And deliver me from the worst of characters, for none can deliver me from it other than you. Here I am, in answer to your call, happy to serve you. All good is within your hands, and evil does not stem from you. I exist by your will and I will return to you. Blessed and high are you. I seek your forgiveness and repent unto you. What a beautiful long dua. But seriously, rarely you will find people saying it. Usually people say the first two lines. Now, this dua again portrays being a slave and a servant of Allah, submitting your will over and over again to Allah, telling Allah Azza wa Jal that you confess and that you adhere to the fact that He is your master, He is your Lord. So you show all types of tawheed to Him, the Almighty. And then you confess of your sins and of your aggression and that no one forgives sins except him then you ask Allah Azza wa Jal to guide you to the best of characters now who would do this nowadays rarely you will find people attributing whatever they are enjoying in life to Allah I'm rich I'm powerful I'm strong I'm an athlete. All of this because of my hard work, of my training, of my intellect, of my long hours of studies, of my connections. Rarely you will find people attributing every single thing in their lives 
to Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is something that we are in need of. We need Allah to guide us to the best of characters. You can't be generous. You can't be kind, merciful, considerate, compassionate without Allah allowing you to. Not even the Prophet can be that without Allah allowing him to. And this is in the Quran. It is only by the mercy of Allah that you're soft to them. Otherwise, had you been hard heart, hearted or rude, they would have gone away from you. So even the Prophet needs Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what he is doing in the beginning of his prayer, asking Allah Azza wa to guide him to the best of character, asking Allah Azza wa to divert him away from the worst of evil characters, stinginess, grudges, hatred, enmity, envy. All of these are not befitting of a Muslim. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ always reiterates, emphasizes on asking Allah, on begging Allah to grant him this. And then at the conclusion, he acknowledges that all good comes from Allah. Yet he glorifies Allah Azza wa Jal. When he says that, and evil does not stem from you, does not come from you. One would say, this is not what we think and believe because there is evil, there is Satan, Allah created Satan, there are hardships, there are crimes happening. Who created them? Allah. There's no doubt in that. There's no creator other than Allah. But what is meant in the hadith is that there is no pure evil coming from Allah Azza wa Jal, because Allah does not create pure evil. Whatever evil is created, we do not attribute it to Allah, though we know that Allah is the creator of evil and good. But there is no pure evil stemming from Allah Azza wa Jal. Even the evil we see, such as Satan, illnesses, earthquakes, volcanoes, there is good in it. Without night, you cannot appreciate day time. Without illness, you cannot appreciate health. So there is no pure evil for the sake of evil. Allah does not create that and it is not attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I am, as it's said, blessed and high be you, I seek your forgiveness. I exist by your will and will return to you. Ana bika wa ilayk. Total submission. I am from you and to you. I have no power on earth that would help me to do whatever I want if you don't guide me, if you don't help me. This is the attitude of a Muslim. And that's why Muslims are not arrogant. They don't have pride in themselves. They're always down to earth people when they follow the Quran and Sunnah. And this is why they are down to earth people because this is how they deal with their Lord. They bow only to him. They prostrate only to him and they glorify only him, the all mighty. This is all the time we have until we meet next time. I leave you fi amanillah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.